Hello, I'm Dr. Arafa Kassaboy, a practicing internist and a medical editor for Medscape and WebMD. Welcome to our weekly brief on recent medical news and findings. Low blood levels of vitamin D have been linked to an increased risk for asthma attacks in children and adults with asthma. A new Cochrane review suggests that the addition of vitamin D supplements to standard asthma medication can lead to fewer severe asthma attacks, particularly in patients with mild to moderate asthma. The meta-analysis of nine double-blind randomized placebo-controlled trials included over 400 kids and 600 adults. Adding oral vitamin D to treatment decreased both the risk for a severe asthma exacerbation, requiring oral steroids, and the average number of annual asthma attacks. The supplementation also decreased the risk for an asthma attack requiring a visit to the ER or a hospital stay from six to around three per 100. Still, vitamin D had little or no effect on lung function or on the day-to-day -day symptoms of asthma. While vitamin D supplementation is an easy add, just a caution, definitive guidelines can't be made until we have more research and a better understanding of the implication of a low baseline vitamin D level. Next, clinicians are being advised to look more closely at the statins they're prescribing for their patients, especially those who meet indications for high-intensity statins based on the 2013 ACC and AHA guidelines. Investigators analyzing the patient and provider assessment of lipid management registry found that while the guidelines shifted from lipid goals to statin intensity, many patients at higher risk for heart disease were still being undertreated. The study found that 74% of patients who were indicated for statins were taking them, but only 45% were on the appropriate intensity statin. The biggest gap came in those patients recommended for high intensity statins. In that group, while 80% were on a statin, only about 30% were taking a statin that's considered high intensity, like higher dose atorvastatin, rosuvastatin, and simvastatin. Also, undertreatment was more common with primary prevention of heart disease. The groups most likely to be undertreated include women, African Americans, patients with diabetes, and those not seen by a cardiologist. Researchers blame the undertreatment on what they call clinical inertia. They note new prescriptions are more likely to be written correctly, but that patients already on statins are less likely to be titrated up when warranted. They recommend doctors look at their patients on statins and increase intensity if appropriate. And finally, researchers confirm a link between gallstone disease and heart disease. This meta-analysis examined databases involving over 800,000 patients and 51,000 cases of heart disease. It included the nurses' health studies, the health professionals' follow-up study, and four other prospective trials. 6% of women and 3% of men had a history of gallstones. They tended to be obese and have hypertension, diabetes, and high cholesterol. But investigators found that even when controlling for typical risk factors for heart disease, those patients with a history of gallstones had a 23% higher risk for heart disease. They do mention that their study is observational and so causation cannot be established. However, it's warranted to have a higher index of suspicion for heart disease in your patients with a history of gallstones, even those without traditional cardiovascular risk factors. You'll find links to each of the stories we've included in today's news brief in the transcript listed below. For Medscape and WebMD, I'm Dr. Arafa Kassaboy.